What's going on, beautiful people? This is Jerry Travis Smith, and this is back to school season. So today I'm gonna to show you some of the things that I do when I set up a brand new Windows 11 home laptop and things that I think would be helpful for most people to do. Now this video is not intended for super advanced users. There are so many ways to optimize Windows 11 beyond what I'm gonna show you, but those methods generally are like a cat and mouse game. A lot of the stuff that these advanced methods turn off, Microsoft figures out a way to turn it back on. So you have to babysit the computer to keep it 100% optimized. But what I'm gonna show you today is more general stuff that your average PC user who's not a power user, and that's fine, computers do not have to belong just to the realm of power users, but I'm gonna show you some things that the average person needs to do when they set up a Windows 11 laptop. To do so, I have a Lenovo Legion 7 laptop, and I'll be honest with you, I've been using this laptop for a month or so, but I thought, hey, I'm gonna reset it and record a video going back through the process of how to get this thing free of all the junk that companies like Lenovo tend to put on their machines I'll show you a few other tweaks as well that I do so that your laptop will be ready for taking notes and getting stuff done when you go back to school. All right, so we've got it turned on and this is the first thing you'll see inside of Windows 11. So it'll ask you where your country is. I have a US keyboard. I'm gonna skip adding a secondary layout. All right, I'm gonna need to connect to a network. So I'm gonna use this student guest because I'm actually at our borrowed campus because remember our main building got destroyed in the flood a couple of years ago. I'm go ahead and connect. I'm not sure what kind of updates this installs because this absolutely is not a full set of updates. It's just not because it always goes a lot faster. Maybe it's setup file updates that it downloads but you gotta sit here for a while and let it do this. I find it kind of condescending that it says, sit back and watch the magic happen. This is not magical, but at least they're trying to make the computer more friendly for folks, I guess. I'm using an Elgato HD60 capture device in order to capture this. So the HDMI output doesn't start from the laptop during this part of the boot process. Updates are underway. That always reminds me of a Star Trek captain. Oops, you've lost your connection. Well, this is something I've not seen before, but we're gonna deal with it, because why not? We need to. And this might be something a normal person will see. Oh, I did not do connect automatically, so. I'm not going to do that either because I don't ever want it connecting to this network automatically. All right. Okay, next. Now you got to name your device. So I'm just going to call this Trav Lenovo. If you don't give it a name and let Windows automatically assign it, I think it's some iteration of the serial number or maybe just random gobbledygook because all the automatically generated names I've ever dealt with in Windows 10 and 11 have been foolish. Well, I think they're foolish. This laptop's actually pretty fast, but through the magic of video editing, I'm gonna jump around from some of these loading times and stuff because there's no sense and you sit and you're watching it, and no two model of computers are gonna be exactly the same in terms of loading speed anyway. You know what, I'm just gonna do connect automatically because this is gonna aggravate me to death if I don't. Because it needs to be connected quite a bit for the stuff we're gonna be doing. So yeah, I acquiesce. This is Editor Trav here, and I realized at this point that I glossed over what this was asking you to do. This is wanting you to sign into a Microsoft account. 
If you don't have one, you can create one for free, and I recommend doing that so that you have control over it if you don't already have a Microsoft account. A lot of times your university or school will give you credentials that you can log in to Microsoft with, but I recommend not setting up a new laptop that you own that way because if you graduate or drop out of school or whatever, you're going to lose access to that account. My Microsoft account has two-factor authentication, so I'll go ahead and take care of that right now. That's a topic for another video. I do not want to restore this from a backup. We're going to set it up as a new machine. Now, if your machine has a fingerprint reader, you got to train it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm basically just going to follow the prompts and take my finger that I'm going to use and move it around the way that it tells me until it says, all right, we're ready to authenticate you with your fingerprint. Ooh. <laughs> I get a kick out of this. It's so silly. It does seem to work. I've had people try to get in with a fingerprint reader and it, it won't let them in, but it lets me in. Because you always wonder, are they just faking it? But it seems pretty legit. Now we'll set up a pin number just in case the fingerprint reader stops working or you burn your finger really bad and that finger will no longer work. And the thing about pins, they're device specific. So this pin is not tied to the account in any other way. This is tied to this device, which is tied to the account. Now, this is a point of contention. Some people will say, go ahead and leave all this on. But if it's me, I turn this stuff off. Except find my device, because I think that's kind of helpful sometimes. Now, that does open up a privacy vector, but hey, it is what it is. And you're not actually turning off the diagnostic data here. You have to do some of those power tweaks that I was talking about earlier. But we're going to turn it off except for required only. Inking and typing, no. Turn that off. Advertising ID, no. So the only thing I'm leaving on is find my device. Some people may not want that if you don't turn it off. But for me personally, it's pretty useful um, for finding a device. All right, so this is Lenovo's little part of this. So you just got to put in um, who the device belongs to. Um, for warranty purposes, I recommend that if your device manufacturer has an option like this, add this device to my, in this case, Lenovo ID profile. Seems like Dell does this too. I don't know about HP. It's been a while since I've set up one of their machines. But um, I don't mind the marketing emails because honestly you get some pretty good coupons sometimes. I do not want McAfee having my address and um, I do not want the anonymous um, data collection by Lenovo. Whether or not these companies abide by this, the average person, and in this case myself included, really has no idea if they're honoring that or not, but I'm gonna turn it off. These settings here, from what I can tell, prioritizes the stuff that's shown in your start menu early on, and some of the stuff they try to upsell you, and external programs they try to sell you, it changes what shows up. Me personally, I have skipped this the last few machines that I've set up and been asked this because I would rather it figure out what I want based on what I start installing. But uh, who knows what Microsoft will really do with this, but hey, let's just skip it. Don't need this. It'd be nice, but it's, it's not good.
And no, I'm not going to keep my iPhone photos in OneDrive. Actually, I've done that before, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going to skip it. And we'll allow access to the browsing data. That's a personal choice. If you don't want your browser history syncing up with every machine associated with that account, just um, turn that off. This is Editor Trav again. At this point, I should have mentioned that Microsoft 365 is a yearly subscription that gives you access to Microsoft Office as well as a terabyte of storage in OneDrive. My account is already a paid account for Microsoft 365. Now, if your college or university or even high school district has Microsoft services purchased, you will be able to act activate Office without having to pay anything. So they'll try to sell you Microsoft 365 right here. Make sure you don't have access to it some other way before you pay. I have Microsoft 365. Some people in the comments will have an issue with that, but I've used Microsoft products for a long time. I teach Microsoft products. I support people who use Microsoft products. So if I don't use them, I can't stay current with what's going on. So it's just telling me that I do have um, Microsoft 365. I do not want Game Pass. This is something you will have to do a power uninstall later to get rid of. So they don't make it easy to make that go away. I may do another follow-up video with some more power tweaks to get rid of more stuff. But we're just going to roll with it. Now the computer starts talking to you. And I know why they anthropomorphize machines because it makes people feel better about them. Given the fact that Windows still requires a lot of hand-holding and occasionally messes up, they need to quit this because all it does is make people more angry. If you treat them like a machine that doesn't know any better because it's just responding to what it was programmed to do, you get less mad than if you think it has a personality and whatnot. I have no idea why the recording of the screen going through that Elgato capture <laughs> is rolled down as it is unless I accidentally hit something on the computer mouse and did that, but I don't think I did. I think this is uh, some kind of bug with the HDMI output. Okay, I think it was either a bug in Lenovo's HDMI implementation or a bug in OBS. Regardless, I stopped the recording, restarted OBS, and we're back at it again, and everything looks fine. Ah, the joys of catching bugs on recording. We're in, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go through and get rid of McAfee. Oh my God. Okay, so the reason that McAfee and Norton and some other crappy security software is installed with Windows by Lenovo and Dell and HP is they actually get money from those companies to include that software in a fresh install on a new machine. So they're just trying to make the shareholders happy. So we're gonna remove McAfee right now and um, I use the search box on the start menu a lot and I'm gonna type add remove or just add remo is good enough until we see add remove programs now depending on your particular machine there may be more garbage that you need to get rid of um, I, there's no way for me to know what's on your particular machine even the same model can get a different image over time if it's a model that's around for a year or two. But we know we don't want McAfee. And I could search McAfee, or I'll just roll down until I see the foul beast. Ugh. So uninstall that. Uninstall. Yes. Remove, you don't need this protection. Yeah, I have an act active subscription. No, no thanks. There may be other antiviruses, but Mc uh, McAfee and Norton are the two that I am most familiar with, and I always end up removing from people's machines. There's a decent antivirus built right into Windows, and you just don't need a third-party one if you follow your P's and Q's. Now, there are some antivirus programs that are a little better and um, protect people that go to sites that they don't need to go to and that pirate programs. But if you're not a pirate, then 
I've not really seen that, that any of it's a problem. So we're just going to restart now. Now I didn't really need to restart. When this finishes rebooting, we're going to go back to add and remove one more time and see if there's any more stuff we don't need. There aren't many people that seem like they use search to find everything. I can't tell you the last time that I went through the start menu and looked at stuff like you normally would. I always seem to search. Now one area of contention between IT professionals is do you need the utilities that come with say your Lenovo or your Dell or your HP? Me personally, I tend to leave them until they start causing me problems or slowdowns or they don't work well or whatever. But my experience over the last month or so with the Lenovo utilities is they're fairly healthy. Um, sometimes they pick up updates faster than Microsoft will push them out. And they've been validated by Lenovo to work on this very specific machine. So um, when I see stuff like you know, Lenovo Avatar Master. I don't think I've made an avatar with it, but it's not hurting anything. And Lenovo's offerings are pretty well integrated. Um, this keyboard on this laptop is RGB, so I can set the RGB inside of the app. And Lenovo Vantage, uh, every manufacturer I know of has one of these. Lenovo Vantage uh, is the hub that helps you keep everything updated get warranty information without having to log into an account and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to leave that alone and I'm scrolling down and honestly I don't see a lot of stuff that's just pure garbage. Um, you know, I mean here's my video drivers and whatnot. You can see some of this stuff's probably a little outdated. So we're going to take care of this in the next step. But anything you see that you don't want or that becomes a problem, this is where you go to get rid of it. Add, remove programs. Apparently if I go to settings and apps and then installed apps, that's where that lives. So, but I never get to it with a bunch of clicks. I just search right here or on the um, start menu. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn off the search box because I don't use it. I just click the start menu then start typing. So let's see, I think I right click and go to taskbar settings right here on the taskbar. And I'm going to hide the search box. I have no idea why it's all in that little menu. I guess I do because there's more than two options. I don't need Copilot showing. That's a personal preference. And these widgets down here, um, when you mouse over, they get in the way. I can't remember if you can currently turn that off or not but I never use the widgets, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. Task view is helpful sometimes. That's this little doohickey down here. If you got a bunch of stuff open, ooh, I got a pop-up. This x assistant is because this display is HDR and my capture device, the Elgato, is not playing nice with it or x can't deal with it when HDMI is, uh, is being output or something, so I'm just gonna click OK. But task view is a quick way to show um, everything that's open like in a nice format and then you can have virtual desktops I'm not going to talk about that most people never ever use it all right so there we go um, that's another thing I would do is turn off that search box just because I don't use it let's close that now I'm gonna click start again and I could have just stayed in settings and done this as well and I'm gonna type update so check for updates and this is the official Microsoft updater and check for updates again I have no idea what you're gonna find so what you find here may be entirely different than myself I have quite a few um, <laughs> things that need updated so I'm gonna let this stuff update and we'll be back now some people would say well why don't you just let Windows update itself when it thinks you're not busy or whatever. That's a good point, but my goal here is to have this thing ready to rock and roll 
if you're taking it to class or using it at school. And historically, Windows has been terrible at figuring out when you're using your machine. It's always said that they look to see when you're least busy or you're not doing anything. But I swear to you, my machine to this day, sometimes they'll pester me when I'm right in the middle of things. And I've been using the mouse and keyboard and everything else, and it'll pop up and say, uh, Windows needs to update now. Is that, you know, and it'll update in 30 minutes if you, and I'm like, you know, it's 2024. Let's stop this, please. <laughs> I mean, you, you've been software engineering for quite some time. You don't need to, to do this to people. Okay, so Windows is actually still installing updates. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this. And um, I'm going to go ahead and run Lenovo Advantage. I can't remember what Dell calls their utility, and HP I'm sure has something. So it's going to pull this up and, you know, I don't need the widget. Um, I don't need the web support experience and I have agreed to their policies. I like this. This is, this is pretty nice. It allows you to control your fans and whatever. And depending on your machine, you're going to have different stuff. And depending on the manufacturer, it'll be different stuff. But um, they usually have some kind of diagnostic thing in case you have to call tech support, you know, it, they have um, faculties to run a scan and then the tech support asks you for numbers and things that it says. But system update is usually in here. And like I said, sometimes stuff shows up that Microsoft hasn't necessarily um, pushed out yet. Okay, there's no additional updates that Lenovo has pushed, so I'm not gonna belabor this much anymore because this is very device specific, but I recommend that you just keep your manufacturer's utilities on, go in and run their update routine that is there. All right. Um, also, um, Edge is fine and it's all integrated with your Microsoft account. But one of my first things I do, just so I don't have to fight with a search engine inside the browser, is go ahead and get Chrome. Just install Chrome and it's funny that Google has sponsored content for their own selves, but I'll go ahead and do that. If you've never installed Chrome, it's kind of the same thing. And see, you know, Edge is detected. We're at the Chrome install page and it's mad. It's like, browse securely now, which basically means stay in Edge. But, uh, and I'm gonna uncheck that because apparently if you check that, it, you know, downloads a different updater for Chrome. So, <laughs> I don't know. So it's gonna pop up up here. Um, this is a bonus tip. If for whatever reason you lose your downloads, you know, and you're like, oh God, where'd they go? Uh, you know, it actually lives right there with the three dots. But I always remember all the browsers are like this. If you do control J, it brings up your downloads so that you won't lose them. I like keyboard shortcuts, and I hope you do too. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to download Chrome. I recommend, you know, if you're really into the Google ecosystem, go ahead and log into that. I'm not going to show you all that because I, th I think most people that would be doing this, once you get it installed, it's easy enough for you to go ahead and log in and all that. I hope this is helpful to somebody. This is not like super advanced stuff, but some people really don't like computers and some people really don't like Windows 11. And those people are less likely to be able to get through the process of getting it started and set up and understand what's going on. If you like this kind of thing or found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm. Subscribe. That helps the algorithm too to let it know that you like what I do. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. Even comments that are a little bit snarky. If it's meant to make me be better at doing this, then that's fine. Uh, you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one.